In this video, we are going to be talking about cell differentiation and how we can use cells that we grow in culture in vitro to study the process um, and understand more about it. So what is cell differentiation to begin with? So cell differentiation at the end of the day is the process by which each cell in our body gets specialized to do what it needs to do. So if we were to look at any one of individual cells in our body, regardless of where it came from, it could be in the liver, it could be in the eye, it could be in the kidney, all of them would have the same exact DNA. However, they look very different and they perform very different functions. And that is because during the process of development, they have become differentiated and specialized to do the particular task that belongs to their organ system. Um, this particular process is what is cell differentiation and what makes us so different while still being the same. So when we look at the cells in the multicellular organisms, you have you know, the two main classes. You have your plant cells and your animal cells. But within each one of those classes, you have many, many, many different types of cell. So if you look at a plant itself, it's not going to be composed of the same type of cells all the way through. Depending upon what part of the plant you're looking at, what function it performs, it's going to have very different um, morphology as well as um, biology, molecular biology inside it. And that is going to be dictated by what proteins are getting expressed within them. So which genes are activated and which proteins are getting expressed inside them why don't they all look the same and why do they look different is because they have very specific functions to perform. In a multicellular organism, the organism works as a whole and works more efficiently by dividing the roles that it needs to have for its survival. So by dividing all the functions that it needs to do and allocating specific roles to specific body parts, it allows those roles to be specialized and organized and develop to a better degree. And that allows them to do a better job at uh, those uh, different aspects of survival. So that is why you have the various types of cells and they all work together to create the whole organism that can then survive. This process was studied by many, many, many different embryologists as well as developmental biologists throughout the 19th century, as well as the you know throughout the 19th century, 18th century. Um, so there was this project called the Embryo Project, published in 1935 by Hans Trisch. He was a German embryologist, and he did some cool experiments, very simple but really cool experiments where he took sea urchins and he looked at their development from the original zygote, which was the first fertilized egg, all the way up to the full um, actual organism, all the way, uh, you know, adult organism. And so he looked at first the normal development. He looked at how the cells went from the single cell to a two cell embryo, to a four cell embryo, to a what we call a, a blast and then finally to a larva. Then he separated the cells and he divided them various ways. He divided them horizontally so that the individual cells were separated and he divided them vertically. So he did them both ways. When he divided the cells at a two cell embryo stage, he got two complete larva at the end of the process. When he divided them, when he separated these cells at a four cell embryo stage, he got four different larvae all the way through. They were smaller than the normal uh, uh, larva that he developed from a single zygote when the cells were not separated, but they were complete and there was no problem. However, when he started to isolate them at a later stage, when they had already developed a blast and they had already gone more into development, he found that now he did not necessarily get a full organism or a full larva at the end of the day. 
So if you had the normal development after a few cell divisions, the cells start to differentiate, they start to become different, uh, they start to become organized. And so you have an animal cap, a mesoderm progenitor section, and then micromeres. And what he found that if he only had an animal cap, those cells never developed into a full larva, but just stayed like a blast. However, when they had the animal cap plus the micromere, they were able to still develop into a full larva, um, albeit a smaller one. So that made him realize that cells do retain the ability to become multiple things for a long time through development. There are times when you can actually go ahead and still use them as a multi-potential cell. And this is what we do. This is what the property that we nowadays use to study uh, the development of different organ system and also the process of stem cell, uh, stem cell differentiation. How we can use these stem cells that are able to turn into multiple things for our own benefit and develop them into different organ system or different types of cells that can be used in medicine to cure diseases or to treat uh, different problems. So in, an, uh, in a human development, for example, or in most uh, mammalian cells, you have your in vivo fertilized egg. That egg is obviously a totipotent cell. Totipotent cell is a cell that can turn into anything from the entire body. That cell is able to turn into any one of the over 200 types of cells that are present inside our body. <coughs> Up until the eight cell embryo, it appears that this is the case. You are able to take these cells and they still remain mostly totipotent cells. However, after that eight cell embryo stage, the cells start to polarize and you start to get different layers and different clusters of cells. This stage is called the blastocyst cell. If you take this cluster of cells that are in the blastocyst on one side, now these cells can turn into multiple tissues and multiple types of cells, but cannot turn into an entire organism as a whole. These cells, when cultured, these undifferentiated stem cells are called pluripotent cells. You can use them to get blood cells, cardiac muscle, neural cells, uh, skin layers, a lot of different types of cells. However, you cannot use them to make an entire human being, and that's a very important distinction. So they are not totipotent anymore. These pluripotent cells are what we use in stem cell research. So using these pluripotent cells, we can study the process of cell differentiation and look at how cells that are not so specialized become more specialized depending upon the signals and the environment that they are in. So why would we want to differentiate the cells? Well, there are many reasons for this organism to do so. Uh, basically, the very cells from whether it's a plant or an animal, they need to perform a lot of different types of functions in order to remain alive and to interact with their environment and do all the work that they need to do. If every single cell was to do every single function, the it would use way too much energy and it would not be a very good solution to that. So differentiation dramatically allows the organism to reduce the energy consumption while making a very specific specialized function assigned to each organ system. This through the process of differentiation you will notice that these cells completely change. Their shapes are going to be different, their sizes are going to be different, their membrane potential will be different, and, and how they respond to signals will be different. And that will allow them to actually do the work that they need to do. Um, so cell differentiation is n almost never going to involve the DNA sequence to be changed, right? The DNA is going to be the same in the nucleus regardless of where the cell is coming from as long as it's in that organism. However, these different cells can have very, very different characteristics, even having the same genome, and that's because of the type of genes that are activated and what proteins are getting expressed. It could be due to modifications in gene expression or modifications in the post-translational um, protein itself. 